So welcome to day 26 of the Money Challenge. Today we're going to look at investment. Uh, our verse for today is Proverbs 21 verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit. Now, God wants us to multiply in all that we do. Um, his basic instruction to Adam and Eve was be fruitful and multiply. That's in Genesis 1.28. Mankind was designed to multiply. If you look at the parable, parable of the talents, it makes it clear that the master in that, in that parable was expecting the servants to steward what they were given for multiplication. Jesus as well. He only invested in disciples who were themselves multipliers. Well, how do we know this? Well, 12 disciples took on the Great Commission and we now see uh, about a third of the planet who know Jesus because the disciples were multipliers. They found more multipliers and people told people who told people. Paul picks up this theme uh, in his letter to Timothy. We read in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. What's Paul saying? Well, he is saying invest in people who will take what you have given and teach it to others, thus multiplying the message. So God's no different in the area of money than he is in every other area. I believe he expects us to multiply what he's given us to steward. Now, I'm not an investment advisor. Uh, I don't think I can give proper investment advice as to what you should invest in, and I'm not going to. But I will set out some principles for investment for you to think about. The first principle is this. Compound interest will destroy your money when it's in debt, but it will multiply your savings. Now, I really encourage you, if you are going to take another book out to read, I suggest you read a book called The Automatic Millionaire. If you read that book, it will probably change the way you look at saving small amounts of money. But, but, but you look at that and I will explain briefly a principle. Let's say you are 15 years old, and I'm challenging my daughter on this, and you decide to save 50 pence a day until you're at the age of 60. If you could get a 10% rate of interest on those savings, which is over the last 60 years is, is entirely normal, then by the time you hit 60, you would have a million pounds of savings. The total amount you'll have actually saved is £8,213, but because of the powerful effect of compound interest, you actually move from £8,000 saved through to a million pounds. The reverse is true if you're looking at debt. So my first piece of advice is get your debts repaid and then look at any form of interest or any form of investment that will give you compound interest. The second thing I would advise is that make anti-inflationary investments part of your investment portfolio. Inflation is this. It is when money or the price of goods go up and money is therefore worth less. Now, there's all sorts of reasons this may happen in an economy, and I'm not going to go into that. But inflation works like this. Let's say if you could buy a loaf of bread for a pound now, but by the beginning of next year, it will cost you five pounds. That really means that your money is worth less. Your one pound is worth a lot less in a year's time than it is worth now. And so... You need to think about adding things that are anti-inflationary to your investment portfolio. Classic examples of this are silver and gold. They go up and down with the market, but they tend to beat inflation. 
Um, sometimes it's things like high-end watches, if you know what you're on about, or handbags or something like that. They also can be anti-inflationary. Um, I wouldn't necessarily advise you to invest huge amounts into anti-inflationary type um, investments because they don't generate money. They simply are a hedge against um, inflation. So probably no more than 15% in those type of investments. Thirdly, spread your risk. Unless you are an expert in trading, you should spread your risk and have a broad um, uh, portfolio of investments. Ecclesiastes 11.2 says this, invest in seven ventures, yes in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So don't fall in the trap of just putting all your money into one investment, spread your risk by investing in multiple ventures. My fourth piece of advice to you is invest and don't trade. Now, many people fancy themselves as traders as opposed to investors. Now, traders are people who look to take quick advantage of price changes um, and they therefore are always in the market looking to the next deal, buy cheap um, and sell more expensive. Now, if this is your job or your area of expertise, fine. But if it's not your job, then don't play it with it. Just find something you can invest in, um, something that is long-term and you can put it in and you will see it grow over time. Don't look for the quick profit, look for something stable and something which is dependable. Fifthly, only invest in things you understand. If you do not understand what the investment does, if you do not understand the product or what it's doing, then don't invest in it because you're over your head. Invest in companies or invest in things you fully understand. Um, you know, for example, one of the biggest investors is Warren Buffett. He doesn't invest in things he doesn't understand. He understands Coca-Cola. He understands the market for Coca-Cola. He invests in that. He doesn't invest in things he doesn't understand. So if somebody who's that successful can do that, then I suggest you do the same. Sixthly, invest in companies with a low level of debt. Have a look at the companies, see how much debt they keep, and if they have massive levels of debt versus their income, then maybe shy away from them, because that debt will be um, exactly the same as your debt. It will be eating the money of that company. Seventhly and finally, think long-term, not short-term. Don't think about getting rich quick schemes. Think about something which over time will be safe and will be a consistent investment for you. So think about your investment profile. For many of you, you may not have loads of money to invest. That's fine. Start small. Start small and ask for the Lord to bless what you're doing. Let's pray together. Father, give me wisdom in this area of investment. Give me grace to multiply in the area of finances. Amen.